gorgeous and like nothing I expected. Welcome to Palolim, I'm in South Goa. Now, I have loved India. I've spent several weeks here and it has been fantastic. I've already realized I want to come back as soon as I can and not get the e-visa, but actually get a longer visa. That said, I really needed a break. The cities, especially in North India, they can be a little bit intense. The heat, the people, the crowds, the horns, the noise, the horns. It's really the horns. The honking in India is pretty insane, much more than I've seen in any other country. And I really wanted to go somewhere where I could relax. There would be less traffic, less horns, hopefully no horns. I've been in Palalam for several days. And so yesterday we rented a bike and we went up north. That's right, there are two parts to Goa. There are actually two airports. There's a North Goa and a South Goa. And so we went to three beaches. We went to Benalem Beach, which is really kind of a tourist area. There are a lot of people from the UK there and also kind of tourist prices. So we saw the beach and then walked up the beach and found another beach and it was called Kolva Beach. And that was very much like Indians go there. Um, it was better. I loved it. We got uh, a canopy and loungers for the day, you know, local prices, local beach prices, and it was fantastic. And then on the way home, we stopped at Kola Beach, which is close to Palalam, and you go down this little cliff, there are stairs, and you just see the most gorgeous sunset. It was absolutely beautiful. But today in this video, I want to share with you Palalam Beach, and then over the next couple days, I'm going to share two beaches that are close by. Agonda Beach, which is supposed to be less developed, and then Patnam Beach, which is supposed to be similar to here. Now, everyone told me that Goa was the Hawaii of India, and that Palalam specifically was the most beautiful beach, and that was because it was white sand. So I'm gonna share with you a little bit about that because people lied to me. Many people misrepresent Goa, but it's still beautiful. But I'm gonna share with you what it's really like and why you should go. I have been at many beautiful beaches around the world, but none have this golden light that you see in Goa. It's just this yellow sun all day long, and to get here and see it at sunset is just gorgeous. Right, so I'm shooting this actually in the shade purposely. That's because one, it's easier to shoot, and two, the waves here are so loud. That's exactly what I wanted. I picked a place on the beach because I wanted to be able to go to sleep listening to the waves, wake up hearing them, and wow, I can. <laughs> when I got here, I didn't have a place to stay yet. So instead, because it was the end of tourist season, I decided I would just come down and look at accommodation first. So I knew what I was getting. Because you know, when you book on booking sites, the pictures always look great and then you get there and realize it's the place is aged like 20 years. Um, so I came down here, I ended up picking a place, it's called Casa Blanca. Now Palolam is known for these wooden cottages. They're basically huts or cottages that have little amenity. And that's what existed first here. So they're just little wooden huts, there's a bed. But now because the area has developed quite a bit, you also get hot water, cold water, and then also you get AC. You can also choose a room with less AC, but uh, you do need it during the day. You don't need it at night. My place was 1300 a night. Uh, I heard I could get less, but when I went to Casablanca, I really liked the owner and I tried to negotiate with her. First she said 1500 but she wouldn't go lower than 1300 because she said to me, I just put in new air conditioners, everything here is new, it's clean, the room is, you'll be the first person in it. And so I thought, all right, I respect that. I'm not going to, you know, negotiate further down. Let's just do it for 1300 and it's been worth it. It's been a really great stay there. I hear the ocean. In the morning, I can walk out and go straight to the beach. It's really, really wonderful. We are headed to breakfast. 
It's 9 a.m. right now and you can see it's so bright. We're going somewhere for breakfast that we've eaten at for the last couple of days. It's not traditional Indian, which is not typically what I do. I like to have the food of where I am. Breakfast in a lot of the other cities was great, but in Goa, the food is influenced by uh, the Portuguese. They have their own unique food and just breakfast is not a lot. So instead, I feel like it's better to start the day with lots of vegetables and then move on to the other tasty seafood they've got here. fourth visit to Nereus, which is Nereus Healthy Haven, uh, vegan, vegetarian. They have these amazing vegetable smoothies. Also, Alan tried hummus for the very first time, so we've been having that. I think this is our third time having it. Um, lots of different toasts, wraps, not just strictly uh, vegetarian, they also have some meat. So we're actually having the chicken wrap today because I think we're gonna have a full day ahead of us. But I love this place. Um, no plastic. So they don't do plastic straws, they do do paper. I hate paper straws, so I just told them no straw at all. And then also uh, to get rid of plastic bottles and things like that, they actually offer water for free. So you can get it yourself and they just, it's really nice. The staff seem really happy. You'll see them working on the floor, also in the kitchen, and the food is just like great quality. It's just a really great way to start off the day. So we're having a wrap and salad for breakfast and hummus, but we've had like every, not everything here. We've had a lot here over the last four days and it's all been fantastic. So I would recommend this spot. is a great place to shop but there are two types of stores the first store is a fixed price store and there will be a sign and it will say fixed price second one you can negotiate so I've already been in just to kind of check some prices out and as I'm walking out I'm like oh no no I'm just gonna look I'm just looking the prices have dropped significantly so fixed price that's the price you're not supposed to negotiate but if there's no sign you can negotiate and then hilariously in some of the restaurants here, it says do not ask for a discount. And that's because Indians are like master negotiators, always looking for the best deal. So even a restaurant with a menu, some people still ask for a discount. So for lunch, we're having tali. Now tali isn't a dish, but a style of eating. So it's served in this big round, plate or metallic container, depending on where you go. And then it has a number of smaller dishes. I love eating tali because you discover new things that you haven't had before. And if you don't like one dish, you've got like six others that you can try. Now here in Goa, it's very common to have a fish tali or a shellfish tali. And we're here at Palalam Corner. I think we've probably eaten more than 30 dishes on this menu and they are all good. I've had the kingfish tali before, but I'm using this video as an excuse to eat it again. And so we have this kingfish, which is commonly served um, just as a steak and fried, although you can get it as a curry. Kingfish is different than uh, adult mackerel or king mackerel, which is high in mercury. Also, we've got just some curried vegetables, this salty pickled veg, regular salad, and then also they always give you a little bit of fish curry as well. But I really have to say, like, I just love all of the food here. This place is so good. It is significantly cheaper than what you will find on the beach. So if you're on a budget, you wanna get a big meal, we've been splitting the meal. I think the most we've spent here is 700, and that's when we were really hungry and ordered too much food. So as expected, amazing lunch and it is so hot out you know as we go back to our hotel our little beach hut um, it's really hot so I think we've decided we're going to go find a place that has loungers that if you get a couple of beer or order something that they'll give it to you for free so I know a lot of people like to book um, beach resorts and things so that they have those loungers but actually around here if you're willing to eat lunch or even get a couple drinks, especially right now because it's low season, 
they don't mind if you just take an umbrella and two loungers. So that is the plan. So we have been at Palolam for I think three days now and we decided it was finally time to rent a motorbike and check out the other South Goa beaches. Now this one is only five kilometers away and yet it takes 20 minutes to get here and that's because you have to drive really slow here. Most people here are on scooters or Activas everyone kind of drives really slow there are a lot of speed bumps as well so unlike in other countries where maybe we would have gotten a more powerful bike the Activa is actually perfect um, it's also really banged up <laughs> I will talk about renting a motorbike later because it was a very interesting experience not at all like Indonesia and actually kind of challenging but I'll share that later first I want to check this out We've just paid for parking, which I think Alan said is crucial because we don't want anyone to steal the bike. And it looks like they're setting up for some kind of festival here. And we're gonna go check out the beach. So I had to get out my <laughs> trusty hat, which is about to fall apart because it is the end of March right now and South Goa is really hot. We're actually out at the worst time of day, which is around noon, which normally we know better than that, but we keep going out around noon. I would say this, first impressions of this beach is that it's a little bit more like what I thought Palo Lum would be. It's, a, it's very not developed. There are definitely some beach, I would call them shacks, restaurants, and then when I call shack, I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean they're, you know, just places put together. It's all about the food. And then they have those little cabins. The beach is not as nice as Palo Lam. And actually, it doesn't look like the water is really swimmable. But it's much more relaxed. You know, when people told me about Palo Lam as a place that was super chill, I thought it would look more like this. I didn't realize it would be as developed as it is with like, it's just getting more sleek and posh, which is not what I expected. We're still finding the places that we love, but there's definitely, like it's built for tourism and you definitely feel that. Um, whereas this is off the beaten track for sure. So we have decided to leave and it's just because it's so hot here uh, and that's not this beach it's the time of the year it's the end of March and you're not supposed to be out in the afternoon and we're here at noon we came during the worst time I will say this I do think this is much more chill relaxed if you're looking to unwind that this is the place to do it I love how all of the little cottages are shaded um, they're really really quite nice and so I think if you just want to, you know, unwind, this is it. This is actually what I thought Palo Lam would look like. Palo Lam is a little bit more of like a party, busy, much more touristy. This is definitely more laid back. So we're gonna go back to our spot and just like chill out for the next couple of hours and either go out this afternoon around four or five or tomorrow morning because this is, this is not working. Thing. but uh, heading to the post office we saw that there were a lot of people coming into this temple so we decided to check it out and it's the 30th which we did here in Uganda is a holiday but we're not sure what it's for but there are a lot of people here and there's a lot of food so we're gonna check it out and I want to 
tell you right now, it is 3.30 in the afternoon. We actually spent most of the day inside um, or outside, but in the shade. It's hot. You know, even though we're at the beach, it's like, it's like the desert right next to the beach. There's zero humidity and uh, the sun. It's beautiful color, but it's harsh here. Really, really harsh. You have to wear sunscreen. Even Alan is wearing sunscreen here because it's just so, such a harsh sun. All right, one of our favorite things to drink here is Nimbu Soda, which is a lime soda. So what they do is they put lime, salt, sugar into a glass, and then they top it with soda. What's that? Yeah. 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 Definitely on the saltier side, which I actually think is really good right now because it's so hot. Here, you really have to drink a lot of water. It's so hot, it's like the desert, you can get dehydrated really quickly. Mm. Uh, the lime juice was good. We were looking for something else to eat, but it seems like people are just getting set up maybe for tonight and they're only these sweets. These sweets are really, really sweet. They're good, but not a meal. We still haven't had lunch yet, so we're going to get back on the bike and head somewhere else for lunch. We left a little bit late. It wasn't two o'clock, so I promised Alan the first restaurant we saw we would just eat in. And so this is Round Cube. All right, so as we're waiting for lunch, let me give you the lowdown on renting a motorbike here because it has kind of been a bit of a negative experience for us. And we are only rescued by Palalum Corner Restaurant who helped direct us to someone who was good that we could rent from. They also basically told us uh, how much we were going to be able to rent. So a couple years ago, there were a lot of motorbikes on the market and kind of flooded the market. You could get motorbikes really cheap. And then the police and also Goa Tourism was like, wait a minute, we really need to regulate this because we're just having random people rent to tourists. So now only I think the taxi association can rent to you and tourist bikes have black plates with yellow. If you're found on a white and black uh, motorbike, they will not only take your bike on the spot, but also fine you quite a bit and also the owner of that bike. So it is not worth it. And I was told that you could get one for 300 rupees a day, but um, that seems to be really hard to do. So we talked to a lot of people and then finally, again, at the restaurant, they said to us, I think 400 is the best you're going to do. So we are renting for five days, 400 but we get two helmets and that was something that was uh, you know, a deal breaker for us because the driver always has to be wearing a helmet. That's the law. You can get a fine if the police find you and they do find people as soon as they see it. But I'm also on the bike. My father died in a motorcycle accident when I was five and so I promised my mom I will always wear a helmet, no drinking and driving because she's already very stressed that I'm on bikes all the time. The other thing I do recommend is you really need to take a video of the bike. They're pretty banged up and I've heard lots of horror stories of people who bring the bike back and then try to get scammed. They're, they're, people try to scam them um, and say that there are scratches that weren't there. So take your time. They also encourage you to do this if the person is good, um, but take lots of video of everywhere you can possibly think on your bike plus the helmet. Okay, so Alan just told me uh, it's not spicy. <laughs> so even though we, we said to them when we ordered, hey, we like spice. And so I just saw Alan putting a bunch of pepper on his biryani, which shows me that it's probably not spicy enough. Hmm. Right, it's tasty. Flavors are definitely here. Tastes fantastic. This biryani is so light. Mmm. This is a great spot. I would say my spice is busy with Indians. And that's always a good sign that the food is good. But they also have um, like a page for Western food and then they have those smoothies and a lot of other things. So it's nice. And then they have these little two spots here where you can kind of sit down. We are hogging this one all to ourselves. We're two people and I think you could probably fit like nine here. But next door, it's a group of people. So it's just nice to be able to sit down and eat. And you've got a great view of the, of the beach. It's a beautiful day. The 
beach here is really nice. The water is quite nice. Today there are strong waves, but I think that's just because it's a windy day. It was also windy in Palala. I don't know if you can see me. My straw hat is pretty pulled down low, but I like this beach. I think it might be better than Palala. And with these postcards, I am going to end this video. Three great beaches in South Goa. I think though this one is my favorite. In fact, instead of heading back to Palolam, we're going to stay here for sunset and just hang out for a while. I don't know the difference in prices between Patnam and Palolam, but I have a feeling whatever the price is here, it's probably worth it because it's much more relaxed. And if you don't have a bike and you want to walk to Palolam, it's only half an hour walk. So it's a win-win either way. See you in my next video where I will not be in India, but I will be in a country that I have recently featured. Can you guess which one it is? Join my Patreon community for more behind the scenes and exclusive content you won't find elsewhere. You can also find me on Instagram and be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. All of these things make my day. Thank you so much for your support.